Alright, so we're back once again and today we're going to be talking about or discussing a few scenarios that have been rattling around my head ever since I finished ranked or ranked out. But with the new patch being released today or yesterday or the day after yesterday or the day before yesterday, depending on when this video is released, I'm going to be addicted again. I did try to go back and play a few randoms, but I'd rather subject myself to some form of Japanese World War II torture from Unit 731. Well, maybe not that drastic, but you get the idea. Although some of the stuff they did was actually insane, you should read more about it. I'd highly encourage it, or not. It, it really does depend on your disposition. So instead, I thought I'd make this video and get the opinion of other players on some scenari scenarios that are good, maybe bad, who knows. But with that being said, let's get into it. Oh, and I stream most days on twitch.tv slash thedarkcalling. I usually play World of Warships when I'm in the mood to not be tilted, and it's usually ranked gameplay, which tends to tilt me. So, yeah, yeah, you get the idea. So, scenario one. Let's say you're minding your own business, cruising around the map, and getting ready to citadel or torp the enemy, depending on your choice of ship. And you notice some healthy debate happening in the chat, mostly to the effect of, guys, please don't let me train again for the third game in a row. Which is quickly replied to with, shh, we know what we're doing, we're all going to rush A cap, overload it, kill half their team that happens to be pushing that side of the map, and then have a significant advantage for the rest of the game. So upon seeing this you have a couple of thoughts about this, some of which I probably won't mention for fear of getting demonetized, so let's stick to the PG-13 ones. Do you A, pretend like you didn't hear anything or see anything and proceed along with the game and just try to deal with as much damage as possible before the game ends in 10 minutes as your team implodes into a black hole, roughly the same size as the one at the center of our Milky Way? Or option B, try to negotiate with your team, telling them that if they all go to one cap, the enemy team is very likely to get the easiest crossfire in existence, and as a result, the game is going to end in 10 minutes, like a uh, like a black hole. You get the idea. Instead, tell them that maybe splitting and pushing several caps would be a good idea. Or finally, option C, sit back, don't say anything, and just watch your team feeds themselves into the meat grinder that is the crossfiring enemy team one by one. I'll give you a few seconds to think this one over. Good. So, let's go through them. If you said option A, then probably the best outcome is that you sit at the top of the leaderboard when the game eventually ends at the 10 minute mark. So at least you get some benefit out of it. If you went with option B, then there is probably a higher probability that you'll either just start an argument with the rest of your team about how you think you're so much better than them by telling them that lemon training isn't the best strategy to use when you want to win a World of Warships game. So if that's the case, revert to option A and just Try and farm as much XP as you can, it'll save your mental health alongside your actual physical health because if this happens often enough, you're going to end up slapping your forehead with your hand quite often, and nobody likes a sore hand or a sore forehead. If they listen to you, then congratulations, and enjoy a normal game of World of Warships. If you picked option C, wait, this has gone on for a while, what is option C again? Oh yeah, that. Well, if you picked that option, I guess enjoy the free entertainment. I honestly don't know what to do at that point. Scenario 2 is something a little bit different and perhaps a whole lot simpler. Well, maybe. Let's imagine for a second that you're in your favorite tier 10 destroyer, the Shimikaze, and, let's, and like how most games start, you spawn in the middle of the map at the front of your team. There's several of your allied ships to your left and several to your right. When you press tab on your keyboard to check the ships on the, en on the enemy team because you were AFK during the loading screen getting something very strong to drink because the last game made you turn to alcohol, you see that on the enemy team they have a Daring, Grozovoy and a Kitakaze. There's always one random tier 9 in an otherwise fully tier 10 battle. Now, just like the scenario number one, you are faced with a choice, and here are said choices. Option A. With option A, you can follow the advice that's inside your head and basically not sail into the first cap you see, and run the risk of getting either radared by the enemy team, or even the more enjoyable route for the enemy team, getting spotted by one of the enemy DDs and then promptly getting ripped to shreds. Instead, you can proceed to the flanks like your ship was actually meant to do, and not die within the first two minutes of a battle. Now, you might be saying, that, well, this seems like the most logical and common option. Why the hell wouldn't I pick this? Well, on the one hand, if you do, you might need to be prepared for two things. On the first count, you're very likely to be pinged into oblivion for the fact that you're not immediately contesting a cap by some of the less well-informed players on your team, which can be extremely frustrating if it's happening for the third time in the space of five games. Not a personal experience or anything. 
The other outcome of this option also occurs more towards the end of the game, when several of your teams or even majority of your team's players are dead, and then the spotlight promptly turns to the little shimikaze sitting on the flank simply trying to hit torpedoes. Several questions get asked, along with little bits of abuse also get thrown your way, basically amounting to, why are you not dead like us, it must be because you're bad, etc etc. So if that appeals to you or if you feel like you can handle that, then option A might be the one for you. Option B consists of something a little bit different, when faced with the same starting point at the start of the game, you decide to contest that cap in your shimikaze. Now bear in mind this the same ships are present on the enemy team, namely the Daring, the Grows of Way, etc. So, and so contesting that cap may or may not subject you to some not so kind words depending on both on how good you are at playing at a disadvantage in terms of ship strength and also how poorly the enemy DDs are at actually capitalizing on said advantage given that they actually know that you're there in the first place. Again, based on some of the games I've been having, that's been fairly hit or miss. Finally, option C. Option C is what I would describe as a hybrid of both option A and option B. Option C involves basically pushing relatively slowly, i.e. never using full power, at least at the start of the game, into a position where your concealment basically perfectly overlaps with that of the cruisers that are meant to be pushing with you into any cap that you're contesting. This means that although you might not be the strongest ship DD wise, with appropriate backup from your own cruiser, this advantage or disadvantage becomes nullified. Although, at the same time, be prepared to be confronted with the same level of questioning as option B if you accidentally push too far, moving out of concealment coverage, and ending up being isolated in a cap and dying. Ironically enough, the same people that will complain about you dying early in a cap they told you to contest will probably be the same people who will also complain about you being still alive at the end of the game on the flank, even if you do manage to kill multiple enemy ships. So, some people will just complain regardless, which again, ironically, could be extended to myself based on well, this video. Anyways, what's the option that you pick here? Frankly, from my uninformed and limited perspective, I think any option besides option B here leads to at least decent outcomes, especially if you're a good player. If you're a little bit below average or even just average like myself, then sticking to option A might be the best option, even if your team thinks you're achieving nothing. Remember, playing correctly and getting some people annoyed at you is much better than being swayed by whatever they say and losing a bunch of games as a result. Scenario number three coming right up. So at long last we get to scenario three. There was meant to be five scenarios, but then I saw how long each one of these took to go through and simultaneously thought both you and I would get bored going through so many. So we're going to stick with three and if I keep talking about how five were too many, then I may as well just do all five considering how long it's actually taking me to actually get to the goddamn scenario. Anyways, scenario three. Scenario 3 is going to be a little bit unique from the first two scenarios we've already covered in the respect that there aren't going to focus so much on the gameplay, but more so on how people react to others while playing. So you're still in your shimikaze, and you're still trying your best to actually win the game. Although, as with most games and most humans, mistakes happen. Prime examples of mistakes include Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, and CV players. Although they're probably not all in the same league, let's be honest. So let's say you make a few simple mistakes in game, and you start getting a little bit of abuse for it. Abuse? Abuse. Nothing major, just missing torpedoes, accidentally torpedoing your teammate, even though friendly fire doesn't exist anymore, so it actually doesn't matter anymore. Although the type of player to give someone abuse is probably the player that doesn't even realize this. Upon receiving said abuse, you have a couple of options available to you. Let's go through some of them. Option A, you can completely ignore the uh, advice being directed in your direction and take a stoic approach to playing World of Warships, which sure, it might damage your mental health in the long run, but surely that's a fair price to play for the joy of playing World of Warships, right? Right? I can't believe I said that out loud. Option B involves getting the abuse, sorry, <coughs> advice, like you did in option A, but instead of just grinning and bearing it and moving into the next game, you instead to give back as much advice as you received. This involves many different aspects of effectively trolling someone, such as finding out their stats and making fun of them, or watching them die and making fun of them, or making fun of how they die amongst other things. This again can have some controversial outcomes, including getting reported. But let's be honest, reporting does absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things, and you're going to have to do some pretty heinous stuff to get banned. And that then brings up the final option. Option C, staying silent until you reach a point where they're basically shooting at your ship, ramming into you and basically making it impossible for you to stay calm. And then you unleash on them like you did with option B, although with a slightly increased intensity compared to option B. Kind of like how a 13th century Chinese cannon is similar in intensity to a nuclear bomb. 
So in terms of options, frankly, any option here is mostly fine, as long as you don't get banned. Depending on the circumstance and time of day and mood and any other number of factors, it can really just be a consequence of what's happening in the game, and that'll generally reflect just how intensely you respond to advice. So that pretty much sums it up for my thoughts for another video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you want to see me play World of Warships in real time, I stream at twitch.tv slash the dark calling, and subscribing is also really cool too, so you should do that. But until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.